welcome student in your online session of class 7th today we are going to take the topic that is lesson 5 looping statements in qbasic you have already studied this programming language in your 6th standard so now the extended topics are being taken in this uh, covered in this uh, chapter what is looping before discussing this thing we will see at the end of this session you will be able to define looping iterative looping conditional looping explain for and next loop and write various programs based on for next loops so first of all come to the looping what is looping looping is is used to repeat the execution of a group of statements many times if you want to execute a group of statement to be executed again and again and again then for this looping you can use you can use looping to execute the group of statements many times clear statements that are used to create loopings to apply loopings they are known as looping statements so for the looping the statements which are used they are known as looping statements in qbasic as we are studying the programming language qbasic in qbasic we can do two types of looping the first is iterative looping and second one is conditional looping so what does mean iterative looping iterative looping students a start looping where the number of repetition is already fixed you know that you have to execute this these statements for a five times 10 times 100 times means the repetition is already fixed then such type of looping are considered as iterative looping and second type of looping is conditional looping second type of looping is conditional looping conditional looping means the repetition is based on the condition first loop over check the condition if condition is satisfied then second loop check the condition if condition is satisfied then third loop if the condition is not satisfied then the loop will stop it will exit from the loop okay so what type of looping statements are present here there are in qbasic basic there are two types of looping statement first is iterative where the number of repetition is fixed already fixed and second one is conditional looping where the repetition is based on the on the basis of a condition okay clear beta now students we will see iterative looping as i told you before in iterative looping number of repetition is already fixed for such looping for iterative looping in q basic we use for next looping statement for next looping statement you can see this is the syntax present over here syntax means the format in which you can use the looping statement the format in which you can use the looping statement so syntax is for as the command is here the statement is here then a control variable equal to sign initial value to then final value and this is the optional which is i which i kept in the big brackets this this particular portion is the optional portion of your uh, for loop statement so step is optional we will discuss what is the use of it later on just in the next slide and after that whatever the statement you want to execute the group of statements you will write here at the place of statements and finally you will end this loop with the next statement with the next word and the next keyword you will write the same control variable which you have written with the for same control variable what happen when the loop get executed gets executed the next statement will check whether the control variable reaches to the final value if it is not then it will move in the loop again so you can see 
For next statement is used when we want to execute a group of a statement for a specific number of time. When it is already decided that you have to execute this statement, this group of a statement for a specific number of time, then you can use which statement you can use for next statement. Clear student? You must learn the format of the for next statement. This is the syntax. Syntax is simple the format in which way you can use the statements. Clear? Yeah? Now, as the syntax is given here, I would like to explain you a few of the things. As I have used for counter variable. So what is this counter variable? The counter is the numeric variable that controls the loop. That controls the loop for how many times. So who will keep track on it? Who will uh, keep the record of it? Then the counter will keep the record of it. The, that the control, the loop, and hence it is called the control or index variable. Its value change every time the loop body gets executed. Clear? Now, as I told you, the steps, which is optional part. The optional part of the syntax can be written in form of uh, in uh, and closing within the square brackets. Okay? Big brackets. The step value is the value by which the counter variable incremented or decremented. This is the value according to which the counter will increase or decrease. Clear? And uh, a step value can be positive. If you want to increase, then a step value should be positive. And if you want to decrease, then a step value should be negative. Clear, but you? And the next, it can never be zero. Dear students, it can never be, the step value can never be zero. Either it will be a positive value or a negative value. A step value is omitted. If the step value is omitted, then counter value is incre incremented by one every time loop is executed. As I told you, step value is the optional part. Option part means if you are not using it, then what will happen? The counter value will be incremented by one only every time the loop gets executed. Clear? Now see, this is one of the program I have written here. This is one of the program I have written here and uh, this program, this program is REM. REM for remark, you have already studied these statements in your uh, sixth standard, in your sixth standard. Yes, of course, sixth standard. Mm -hmm. Then REM, REM means a remark you can put, which will never get executed. It will ignored by the uh, uh, QBasic interpreter or the compiler. Program to be print to print the word, print a word for five times. You want to print a word success for five times. Then what we have done? We have used CLS used to clear the screen for. Then counter variable is I. The initial value is one, two. The final value is five here. What you have to do? Which statement you want to execute? Print statement you want to execute. Which statement? Print statement you want to execute. And what you want to print? That is success. This word you want to print. For how many times? For five times. Next and then counter. The next and then counter and for and then counter. Both the variables should be same. At the end of the program, you will write end list. Okay? Now, after the execution, you have seen this particular executed output window. Here, the success has been printed for five times. At the end of the, at the bottom of the output window, you will get this particular statement, this particular press any key to continue. As you press any key, you will back to the code window. You will be back to the code window. Is it okay? Then now, then now I'm going to show you few of the uh, programs, few of the programs. So see, this is, I'm opening QBasic. The QBasic present here. I'm writing the same program on it. You will see, check, rem, print a word, 
for five times. Okay, now clear the screen first and then put the for loop, the start for loop. For i equals to one, two, five. Then you have to print, print. And what you want to print? I want to print success. Okay, and uh, next. And then the counter variable and finally end. The program is over and we can show you, I can show you, yes, the same get printed, success has been printed for the five times, success has been printed for the five times. Same way, suppose if you want to print, suppose if you want to print the numbers, numbers from one to ten. 1 to 10. So what to do? I, from where you have to print? From 1. So initial value will be 1. Till what number? Then till 10 number. So final will, value will be 10. And what you want to print? You want to print the numbers. So where the number are being stored? The number are being stored in the I i's value the first i value will be one the second i value will be two and so and so the last will be 10. so i will be use i to be print over here next time and then just check it what is this doing it is printing the values from one to the numbers from one to 10. is it okay then now you can see one more example i'm showing you one more example that is print even numbers or the odd numbers, whatever you want. Odd numbers from 1 to 25. Okay. Then what will happen? From 1, initial value will be 1 till 25. So i's initial value will be 1 and the final value will be final value will be 25. And you know odd numbers means you have to print one but two should be omitted three but four should be omitted then what should do we will introduce here a step value we will introduce here a step value and we will increase the number by two if we are not including step then what will happen it will the i value will be increased the counter value will be incremented by one only but here we want to increase it by two so we are using step two okay now see the program uh, run and then start what will happen here these are the odd numbers from 1 to from 1 to 25 is it okay now you can see as i told you the step value can be negative also so i want to show you one of the example that is I want to print even numbers. I want to print even, even numbers. And from where? I want to print the even number from 52, from 50 to 20. Okay, see, backward, from 50 to 20. But the, the first number should be printed 50, then second number 48. So the initial value will be 50. Initial value will be 50 and the final value will be 20. We have to stop at the 20 and the step, this is the special thing, a step value should be negative as we are going to print first number 50, second number 48, next number 46, then every time 2 is deducted from the, subtracted from the initial value or the counter value, from the counter value. Now, can we see? Run and then start. So what are these present over here? This is the list of even numbers from, from 50 to 20. Is it okay? Is it okay? So here we have used a step value but negative. 
negative step value. Okay, clear? I want to show one more, more example to you. That is print Hmm. So we want to print rem print a series of numbers. From a series of numbers, hundred, then ninety seven, then ninety four, then so and so, four, comma, one. I want to print, print this series. So, how can I do CLS? Then for, for, count a value, any variable, it can be any I, A, C, or anything. Then initial value will be 100, 2, final value will be 1, and then now check out the step. Step equals to, sorry, step is minus 3. Clear? Then print C, and then next C, and finally N. Now, Shall we check now? Got it? The same series is being printed over here. Clear students? So now I'm going back to the presentation and uh, the presentation was you now you are able to define loops and uh, you are able to define the iterative looping, conditional looping, and you are able to explain the for next loop, and you are able to write various programs using for next loop. So we will share the PDF also, and where I'll give some of the programs, you have to write some of the question to write the program, you have to write program accordingly. So now it's end of the class. I'm going to summarize the class. I'm going to end the class, stay safe, Stay healthy. Okay. Bye, students.